Natasha. Debbie. Show. The show. <laughs> Welcome to it. <laughs> Just two patriotic girls. Learning about the world. So please, don't take us the wrong way. I do know. Nice try. No, I, I was just finishing something really quickly. Hi. Hi. Welcome to the Natasha and Debbie show. And the more I look at this shirt, the more I feel like I should be doing this. <laughs> this totally looks like Star Wars or Star Trek, mm -hmm. the next generation. <laughs> you look Trekky, and I cannot finagle that. Finagle? Yeah. Here. It's just not going to stay. I don't even watch Star oh. Trek. I'm a Star Wars girl. <laughs> but this totally looks Captain Kirky, Spocky. You do. <laughs> Sorry. Oh. Welcome to the show. Glad to have you here. Um, we have a really cool um, video to do that we should have done months ago. We sure but, have. <laughs> before we do that, if you don't mind, we'd appreciate it if you take a fraction of a second out and hit that like button because it's nice of you to do that for us. We and also it. consider subscribing to our channel. It's absolutely free. And it's Debbie's birthday next month. It's coming up. March 21st. It's Debbie's birthday. So if you're waiting to get me something, well, just go ahead and subscribe and hit the like button. Subscribing is better fabulous. though. They're both free. Mm -hmm. They sure are. Happy early birthday, baby. Thank you. You're welcome. So today's episode actually was sent to us, I'm so sorry, many months ago <laughs> by our awesome patron, Paula Bartram. Thank you, Paula. Yeah, I remember Paula. Um, and we've never done Jules Guides videos before, so mm -hmm. this will be a first. Mm -hmm. What's this one called? It's like the most British title. It is. We're going to look at London taxis and lots of spiffing stuff about them. I love the title of this. I know. So uh, this is something that um, I fell in love with the black cabs. Are they call taxis or black cabs? I would say taxis. It's more formal. I've always heard black cabs. And I want to thank you to Mary Dickinson mm -hmm. for sending this to us a while back. Um, Debbie and I used to play with these all the time. Mm -hmm. Now they sit on my desk. And we have a bus too. A double decker. <sighs> So, we have lots of toys. But we can always take more. Mm -hmm. Anyway, um, <laughs> so this episode says, London, you can't see that, can you? No, I cannot okay. read that. Glasses. <laughs> London taxis have been carrying Londoners around for 300 years. I didn't know that. Wow. Mm, impressive. <laughs> uh, in this video, Jules travels around London in taxis, talking to lots of drivers and finding out all about them. Well, I know nothing awesome. about them, except they're really cool. They have that handle inside, and I want to get in one. Um, the history of the taxi, what are the rules and regulations, who owns one, I want to own one, how do you become a taxi driver, how long does it take to do the knowledge, mm, and then it, that. I don't know what that means. Hopefully we'll find out. And then it says, of course, there is the usual foolishness and funny anecdotes too. We've never seen any of his videos, so this will mm -hmm. be a first, but um, we're going to do that now. We're going to take a look at London taxis and lots of spiffing stuff about them. I dig this music. Mm -hmm. I dig his outfit. Hip, hip, tally ho, Jules Guides here, in which I wander around London and tell you fascinating facts. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you like the videos. Now, taxis have been part of London life for over 300 years, and long may it continue. But they weren't always these iconic black taxis that everyone's familiar with. It all started back in Elizabethan times with something called a hackney carriage. Now, a hackney carriage doesn't mean that something that comes from hackney. It actually comes from the French word acne, which means a worn out old horse available for hire, in much the same way as you might come. <laughs> Not long from now, oh. <laughs> that'll be my nickname. <laughs> oh. oh, God. Does anyone call anybody that, like, as a rude yeah, thing? Me. Yeah. Mm, that would be pretty offensive. I'm going to put this back. That's why I'm wondering, because, like, they probably do. if it meant something, if we had something here that meant that, we'd totally be calling people oh. that. Yeah. That's mean. <laughs> Sorry. Back to the video. Which means a worn out old horse available for hire. In much the same way as you might come down to Fleet Street to hire a journalist, a worn out old Fleet Street hack. Hyde Park, please. 
Now, I want to see a sight. name is still a hackney carriage, and by 1654, there were 200 of them after Oliver Cromwell passed this law for the fellowship of master hackney carriages. There's even a city livery company. I really like this route through Hyde Park, especially on a lovely hot day, but we're lucky to be able to come through here because back in 1694, a gaggle of women were so badly behaved in a hackney carriage that they got them banned from the park for over 200 years. Oh no. <laughs> a what? A woman? <laughs> Can you say? A uh, gaggle? Yeah. What's that mean? Uh, I guess a, a gang. Of women. A gang of a women? A gang of women. A gang of women. A gang of rebel women. You gotta watch Out those having gangs fun, of women. tearing it up. Well, then you and they I got could be a gaggle. They got trouble they banned. Women. Were they hackney gang? No. What's, ga what's that word <laughs> that you said? I'm afraid this is going to hit my microphone and cause annoyance, so that's why I'm putting it in weird places. Sorry. I don't know that word. I've never heard that word before. Okay. Driving. Then in 1851, Hyde Park was where they held the Great Exhibition in a big Crystal Palace. Originally, that Crystal Palace really? was here in Hyde yeah. Park. And Sir Richard Mayne was very upset about the fact that a lot of taxi drivers who were picking up these people who had all come to the Great Exhibition didn't seem to know their way around London. So he decided, I know, I'm going to introduce something called the knowledge. The knowledge. Ah, oh, this the looks knowledge. like a knowledgeable man here. Taxi. Not you again. <laughs> <laughs> it's Mark from I my get that all Beatles the time. London tour video. <laughs> and what other sort of things do you need to know in the knowledge then? It covers a six mile radius of Charing Cross Station. Hotels, museums, theatres, shops. And then you need to know the shortest route between any two given points. Oh, okay. In that Sounds like that's something that's you smart. have to like know to be yeah. a driver. Sounds like driver. a test you have to pass or something that you should yeah. know. Which test would be book. useful. I mean, I don't want to get in a cab driver that's going to take me the long route, <laughs> which obviously they would, just they to do try that. to make some more money. Do they do that there? They totally do that here. Mm. At least they used to. You need to know the shortest route between any two given points in that six mile radius. That's what they're going to test you on. Mm -hmm. Every road, what's on them? We're in the Mall. You've got all these clubs down here, the Athenium, the Reform, the Oxford and Cambridge, the RAC. We'd never say, Oh, take me to Birdcage Walk. They'd say, take me to the Institute of Mechanical Engineers, because they know if you know that building, then you'll know Birdcage Walk. Hmm. That means nothing to me. What is happening just now? It's a music video. I love it. This is my original blue book, which the carriage office gave to me in 1983 when I started the knowledge. There's 468 runs in there in total. What does Downing Days mean? Down, no, Downing was the name of the examiner. That's who I had, Mr. Downing. You'll see Mr. Chowcott. So a lot of the cab drivers watching this will remember, oh, I remember him. He was good. He was bad. He was... Oh, yeah? Well, so you got Mr. Yeah. Downing, Mr. Chowcott. Yeah. That's the guy's Lippet. address. Mr. Lippitt. Who was the worst one? Uh, allegedly, in that days, it was Mr. Shearn who had a haircut like me. Mr. Shearn, <laughs> but he was a gentleman when I had him. And there's been many wow. studies. They found that the area of the brain, known as the hippocampus, is more developed in black cab drivers. It's hard to say this with a straight face. <laughs> <laughs> but it actually is, because of the amount of knowledge that you are taking in. They could absolutely mm. ask you anything. What's this on the left here? So we're at Regent's Park now. The Central London Mosque. So he could ask you this, take me from the Central London Mosque to the liberal Jewish synagogue. Or, and you've got to tell him the shortest route between the two points. Oh, wow. That's where Cat Stevens got married in there. Oh, really? Did he really? Yeah, he got married in there. <laughs> I used to love Cat Stevens when I was a teenager. So they're like tour guides too, right? I mean, that's kind of like how Uber's taken over America and Lyft and mm -hmm. all that. So. I can't say the last time I've seen a, a taxi in Cincinnati. It's been a long time. It's been a while. So um, I'm curious, are Lyft and Ubers taking over over there too? Yeah, because these should not go away. No, 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 definitely not. I've heard people in comments when, we, when I've said how much I love these, mm -hmm. say that they're more like expensive and it's cheaper to do other. Mm -hmm. I don't know what they yeah, said. Yeah, is the rate higher for a black taxi? That's what we've heard. But I don't care. I want the experience. Yeah. I want to do it at least once because mm -hmm. they just look really cool. I don't know. Something that I want to do. So, just curious. Well, he was Yusuf then, wasn't he? As he still is. 
This is what happens when you take a cab. This is why we decided to do Mark Letaxi today, so that we wouldn't have to do... Um... Oh, that's a blinding song, that one, Joe Letaxi, isn't it? Vanessa Paradi. Who was her husband? Johnny Depp. Yeah, so it'll be Jules Letaxi, a parody of Vanessa Paradi. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get this, but I like it. Taxi, mm. Let's do it. Hey, it's a full video, man. Up, uh, thank you, driver. Now, one person who's always asking for a handsome cab is Sherlock Holmes. You call me a handsome, please, Mrs. Hudson? You are very <laughs> handsome, sir. The handsome cabs were invented <coughs> by a fellow That's called cool. Joseph Handsome in 1834. And it hmm. was smaller and faster, with the driver sitting on top of what the French called huh. the cabriolet. It looks a little unsafe to me. So these were called the handsome safety cabs. The safety is coming to play a bit more now. They had a lower center of gravity, so they could Just take kidding. the corners a bit faster. That's when this rule came in about having to have a bale of hay in the boot for the horse. And it wasn't mm. actually abolished until about 1976. So technically, really? I'm not sure there was many cab drivers carrying bales of hay till 1976. Really? But you had to have one in the boot. Interesting. Interesting. Wait, true. the boots there. Well, I heard that Truck. a taxi driver is legally allowed, if he needs to relieve, relieve himself, he can just get out and go and um, piss against his back wheel. Is that right? Well, only one. No, I'd <laughs> use all four. Wait, for real? <laughs> wow. Stop the meter, please. Is that really true? Really? Were they taking the piss? Uh, I, don't, I don't know. <laughs> like, literally. Get it? You didn't get that. Yeah, I didn't get it. <laughs> That was funny. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's, they can't be allowed to do that. Yeah, yeah you can't do that here. You urinate in the street. I don't buy it. Mm. I hope that's not true. You get a decent exposure ticket here if you did that. probably looking very gullible right now. <laughs> just say nothing and we'll just turn the video back on and no one will notice that we just said anything. Just smile and nod. I'm just going to head over there for a second. Did you ever watch that um, Jack the Ripper with Michael Caine? Do you remember that series? Do you remember it was, it was really good, that, although, strictly speaking, it, it wasn't very true to life. However, there was a taxi driver in it called a cab driver called John Charles Netley. In 1903, he died over here on this corner. You know how they tried to claim that the Duke of Clarence, the grandson of Queen Victoria, was Jack the Ripper. I've heard that. He had help from this cab driver whose name was John Charles Netley. Anyway, he must have been caning around this corner or something <laughs> and he fell off his horse and his head went under the wheels. Oh, ah, lovely story. Well, John Charles that. Netley. It's, it's weird that it was at Clarence Gate where this cab driver who supposedly was helping the Duke of Clarence died. But I think it's actually utter balls and he had nothing to do with Jack the Ripper at all. Probably not. He should have been wearing seat belts, but, um, Actually, you don't have to wear seatbelts, do you, if you're no, a taxi driver? No, you're not required. We've got an exemption. It's quite restrictive in there. I don't know how you'd manage it. Six foot seven. I'm sure. Six foot six. Six foot six. He's trying to him. No seatbelts. Stay there. Come on. They have a five guys in one. The public carriage office decided to introduce conditions of fitness so that taxis had to be suitable for the job. And one of the uh, one of the requirements was that it had to have a turning circle of 25 feet, which by <laughs> lucky hap, tis the exact distance around the fountain over there at the Savoy Theatre. Imagine that. This is that. where our turning That's circle shocking. comes from. That little roundabout there is the thing that laid the standard down all those years ago to be able to get around that roundabout. And this is the only road in this country where you drive in on the right. It's an old tradition. Yeah, that's true. I would totally... Easy. Okay, that's not fair. <laughs> no, you can't have any of that. That is true. Just starting to get used to the idea of the left, and then you throw that in there. I would come in the wrong way and get... <laughs> <laughs> Theatre. I need a light from the carriage on that side. The, the driver would open the carriage door behind him and they'd get off the carriage on that side and they'd continue the flow around this way. So he wouldn't get off the carriage and go around because it'd be too slow, it'd take too long. And then they just kept it and then it became law. It's, it's legally, you have to go on that side now. Because that was here before the hotel, see the hotel wasn't The here. Savoy Theatre, yeah. right. The passenger okay. would sit behind the driver on the right. Well, why would they? But not in the handsome cab. He, he just sat in the middle, didn't he? you think I am? But I wasn't alive back then. The, the driver <laughs> would be able to open the door 
yeah. for the passenger. That would make sense. Because you, you, you I used sure. to do it on the older, on the traditional, the FX4. I could put my hand out there on what they call the suicide doors, <laughs> click the button, and flip the door open. Yeah, I like those. And that's the one that we all, if you say to someone, what is the iconic English cab? Book? They won't choose this or one of the modern electrics or oh, the really? Vito. Oh. They will point to a picture of the <laughs> FX4 because they were around for about 40 years. My first mm. cab. It was an FX4. Yeah, they, they appeared in 1958, and the last one, that was produced in about 1997. It was the iconic one. You know, we all couldn't wait to get rid of them because the window, you had to pull it up and down like this. We didn't even have a winder, but really? they were a beautiful wow. looking cab. So how many can you get in now? So these taxis can take five passengers. The newer electric ones and the bigger taxis can take six. If I'm on the taxi rank I don't like and those. you walk up to no. me, I'm obliged to take you within a 12 mile radius of where that place is. Why 12 miles? So 12 miles, historically it's a kind of reasonable distance expected for a horse and carriage to go. I think is where, the, uh, where that stems from. Uh, and, uh, and are there any exceptions? So if you're drunk or aggressive, I can turn you down and say I'm afraid not tonight sir, you have to get the bus. Um, if I have a previous appointment that I need to get to, that the journey will get me late. And then the last reason to tell you is if you're that jewel skeezer off the YouTube. Oh, that's <laughs> charming. <laughs> 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 oh, man. Oh, no, no, no. That's no better. <laughs> this is the Theatre Royal Haymarket. I've never and heard I, of any I think of these it was places. back in like 2012 when the Queen Royal surprised Hay. everybody at um, a performance of One Man, Two Governors when she showed up in a taxi. Prince Philip, Duke of Edinburgh, he owns a taxi cab, doesn't he? Stephen Fry owns one, Noel Edmonds. Kate Moss, Arnie owns one, he'll be back. <laughs> yeah, I think Kim Kardashian uh, owns a taxi. Kim Kardashian Why? has revealed plans to relocate to the UK next month so she can begin studying now. for the London taxi exam, the knowledge. Passing okay. knowledge is something I've <laughs> dreamed joke. of since I was a little girl, says Kim Kardashian. <laughs> I've been blessed with success in various fields, but I you can have her. feel my life Please. will be truly complete <laughs> until I've memorised all 25,000 London streets within a six-mile radius of Charing Cross. Do you reckon Kim Kardashian's going to be able to do this? <laughs> <laughs> How long did it take you? I don't know if she can. Well, she probably can if she's got the brain. Um, how many? The, how, how much did you say you have to memorize? Life Listen. will be truly complete until I've memorized all 25,000 London streets within a six mile radius of Charing Cross. 25,000 London streets in a six mile radius. Uh -huh. You have to learn a whole That's a lot of streets. Crap. Yeah. No, dude, no. And then you got to know the shortest distance between. And then you should probably points. know a little something about each place points. you're going, right? Yeah, and then you have to remember to drive on the left. Except for the one place where you drive on the right. Exactly. <laughs> I cannot do it. <laughs> Me just over two years to do it. Two years. Two years, two years and five, five or six months. Hard work. Wow. Mm. Yeah, so it takes a lot of commitment to do the knowledge. And Definitely. That's part about it. It's freedom. It. You can do whatever you want, whenever you please. You can switch off, go home whenever you, you know you please. So it's just working for yourself, which is easy for you to maneuver with your kids and that, you know, so well, it's just true. hard at the moment though, I bet. Well, there's no work. Tough job, so for sure. A lot of jerks out there. Right? Spend most of our time sitting down here not doing anything. So. See, everyone's trying to stay fit. Is it? Are these nice taxi drivers? Yeah, they're all taxi really? drivers. They're trying to stay fit because <laughs> there's nothing to do. Yeah. So we do a whole, I think it's 10 laps. Sometimes I don't know whether you're supposed to tip or not. I think a lot of people would like to know if you're supposed mm, to I tip know. or not tip a taxi driver. We do here. Well, traditionally, I think the majority of people do tip. I suppose 10% uh -huh. is pretty average. Yeah, look really? at that. Look at the amount of brass in there. It's yeah, come to that. Poor old me. Some of those are out of date. It's funny talking about tips. It's, uh, we're just opposite <coughs> Her Majesty's Theatre. In 1984, sadly, that was where Tommy Cooper died. He, he died on the stage in there. Famously, there's a story about Tommy Cooper. Oh, I'm going back. Sorry. I, someone, I don't remember who it was. Maybe it was Brett. Brett, was it you? Someone mm. told me about this. Oh, yeah? Yeah. And um, 
like a comedian and he literally just like had I think people thought it was part of the act or something. I don't mm. know. He's probably getting ready to say that. Sorry. Cooper died. He, he died on the stage in there. I don't know who the gentleman there's is. There's a though. story about Tommy Cooper tipping. So he's got out. He's, thank you, driver. Have a drink on me. And he's put it in there and gone like that. So the driver, what we all do, we've driven down the road. And as soon as you're around the corner, you think, he's giving me a fiver. And the driver's pulled out a tea bag. <laughs> <laughs> That's me. Another requirement that came in in 1907 was the taxi meter. And taxi comes from taxo, I charge in Latin. Taxo, taxare, taxawi. Taxitus. And a taxi meter was a machine to measure how far you charge for a fare. In fact, that's where you get the word taxi from. In the old style cabs, the yeah. to start the meter was there was a, f a flag that was up and that would mm -hmm. show you for hire. Mm -hmm. As soon as somebody put their, their hand out to hail or to flag you down, that's where the saying comes from. You used to pull the flag down and that would start the meter. Question. Are they only in London? The black taxis? Mmm. I mean, London taxis. Interesting. So I'm guessing they're only in London? Maybe the, only the black ones are there, and maybe maybe the other ones are everywhere. What other ones, though? Just the regular taxi. Do you ones. have regular taxi? I've not seen just a yellow taxi. I'm going to see if a tall person can drive a cab. Interestingly, these are the design of taxis oh, wow. was so that a man tall. wearing a top hat could get inside the cab. Ah. So, so for me, in this bowler hat, this is perfectly accommodating. However, <laughs> less can be said for the, yeah. uh, for the leg room. When you wear that, that's much more uncomfortable. This isn't, this, this isn't against the law <laughs> to imitate a taxi driver. Yeah, you, oh, that's, that's that would not work for him. Oh, he, oh the accent, where we go? All right, mate, yeah, where uh, the attitude's coming out? Like, this is okay, it. Okay, where do you want to go then? What, uh, what, Brixton this time, all right, love? How many of you? Well, you never guess who I had in about my cab the other day. Is it time or is it distance? It's a little bit of both. So See? if you're sitting in traffic stationary, right. as you tend to do a lot in London, then mm. it's just going to be timed. Maybe 20 pence every couple of minutes. There's a chart there in the that's back it? that explains everything. <laughs> Just set that meter there for you, shall I? That's it. 320. Now, don't tell me these are overly expensive because you've just got into a £70,000 taxi per bill for £3.20. So, like Addison Lee, they're £8.45 minimum. Uber, they've got a minimum and it's nowhere near that. But ah. another weird rule is that if someone pays you with a £50 note and you mm -hmm. don't have the change, you're entitled to take that, and you don't have to give them change immediately, but you can post them their change to their address. I'd what? I see their face when I tell them that one. <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh, I'm not okay with that. Oh, surely they would make sure that they have change, because like the cab driver just said, yeah, right. <laughs> um, maybe I'm falling for stuff here, but... You're going to find change. I, that could cause a big fight. Uh, where can I take you? Can I go to the Strand, please? No problem, mate. Yeah, hop in. Uh, I'll he's, take you there. He's, no he's, <laughs> he's all hunched over. over. Big man, little car. There's a danger that these cabs might die out in a few years. What <laughs> no. with Uber and driverless cars and all sorts. It's yeah, quite difficult no. for them to make a living. The one I have. They don't. Such mm -hmm. an iconic part of London life. And I can actually fit inside one because I'm the right, the right height. They're the right height for me. This has got a built-in ramp. They've had to be wheelchair accessible for oh, cool. many years nice. now. That's really The disabled neat. have been put at a huge disadvantage because if they howl you, you can't always stop where the person is. So it mm. could be absolutely piddling down with rain mm. and you just can't stop because now we've got all these cycle lanes in. We've now gotcha. got reduced speed limits of 20 mile an hour. Cycling lanes aren't enough. You see, they still want the road like this guy. Look, he's looking at his phone. <laughs> when Transport for London took over in 2000, never any consultation, just steadily come down. I love the song now, in my head. So this is the church of St. Mary Le Strand, where the first taxi rank was established. Hmm. Now, it wasn't until 1634 when Captain John Bailey, who actually sailed with uh, Sir Walter Raleigh, he decided, I know, I'm going to get some people together with some proper uniforms and position them here so people knew where to come and hail them from. Okay. The reason why he chose this place is because there was this big maypole here. Not a flagpole like that, but it was about twice mm. the height of that. And uh, people used to come here on days of great festivities and dance around it. So he knew there would be a lot of customers for him here. Okay. But eventually, okay. Oliver Cromwell, who was a real bag of joy, 
he uh, he tore down the maypole because everyone was enjoying it too in. much. <laughs> Such a misery guts. Let's see if we can find a taxi ourselves. Just a taxi, semi it's a funny little place you're in here. There's yeah. only room for one cab. This is here. one. This is the horse's tail. It was, used to be known when we were radio cabs. Had two-way radios that say any cabs near the horse's tail. And if you're a new driver, you'd think, what the hell is he on about? And so you know, the experienced drivers would say it's the little one-cab rank at the top of Queensgate, which is where we are now. There's the horse's tail on that statue. Just across the road from Benny Hill's flat, just just oh, there. Where Benny Hill used yeah, to there's live. a blue placard to him oh, on the wall cool. just there. Wow. Excellent. I almost wonder if it's more tourists that take the taxi. Maybe. But he did say that it's cheaper. He gave us the pricing from mm -hmm. Uber and Lyft, so mm -hmm. this video is a couple years. I think it's two years old. So, but well, hopefully, it's still that way. I bet it is. Paula. Now that's a, that's a taxi. taxi. When the sun's out, it sparkles like rainbow glitter. But when it's like this, it's sort of metallic-y looking. It's, it, it, I mean, I'm trying to do a video it's about the iconic black taxi, taxi cabs. Yeah, yeah. I've got one full of <laughs> advertising, another one that's big. Yeah. Well, you can see that one from the International Space Station. <laughs> that would be good for weddings. So, like, you do weddings yeah. with it. Ascot, Ladies' Day, weddings. Bachelor Funerals. parties. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Hindu. Oh, yeah. The pink cab. <laughs> Some of the people I've had in the cab, I've had John Bon Jovi. But embarrassingly, I thought it was Brian Adams. What's up, Jamie Redknapp, Boris Becker, Cat Daly, Clint Eastwood. And he said, Would you take me to hey. the Cotswolds? I've never been there. You've got to be careful. You can hardly yeah. hear them coming, these. I love he's, he's, he's here to charge his cab. Yeah. All electric. We found a female cab driver, Did which you? is quite rare, but I think you black know, cabs, we... pink cabs, I, I, blue cabs. And look at me, a black man in a black white cab. <laughs> 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 I think black man in a white black cab. Yeah, they, just... get, they get confused sometimes when you dri we drive the white ones. Yeah. They reckon probably they're not the same price, cost and stuff, stuff like that. What's your name? They're all the same. My name is Ibrahim. Any of you black cab drivers explain to me why none of you oh, have a black cab. It's actually black underneath. Yeah, so is mine It's actually. black underneath. Yeah. Yeah. There's certain parts of over. London, like the Royal Parks and round by the palaces, Buckingham Palace, that you are not allowed advertising boards. So this is the only way you can get an advert oh, yeah. in the Royal Parks or the Royal Palaces. It's the only way you can do it, is to put an advert like this on a cab. Mm. Interesting. Makes I didn't sense. know they had anything other than black cabs. So yeah, this has been throwing me off mm -hmm. the whole time. So I'm glad they, they mentioned that and said something. Now I've talked about these a million times before in my videos, but back in 1875, Captain Armstrong, who was the editor of the Globe newspaper up in Fleet Street, he needed a cab, so he sent out one of his lackeys to go and hail one for him. But all the taxi drivers were in the pub keeping warm because it was the middle of winter, they were freezing cold. So he got together with the Earl of Shaftesbury and they came up with the idea of these cabman shelters. But you can't discuss politics in them, so don't mention the war. <laughs> Unfortunately, this one is closed, so I'll have to leave it to vintage jewels to tell you all about them. <laughs> in the old days, before they drove taxis like this, they used to drive handsome cabs and they'd be out in all sorts of weather. <coughs> so the cabman shelter funds had all these yeah, places cool. built so that they could get good and wholesome <coughs> refreshments at moderate prices. Uh, one cup of tea with 18 sugars, please. <laughs> it's you. <laughs> it is me. Dotted around London. Got handrails along the side and that was to tie the horse to. The taxi That's drivers really cool. are the only ones who are allowed to sit inside, but we can go and take takeaway. There is a famous story about Frank Sinatra, more or less opposite the Albert Hall, going in and having a cup of tea. Did mm. they let him inside though? He's not a cab driver. Would you turn him down? <laughs> the interesting <laughs> thing about this particular one here in Temple, and it's quite appropriate that they've got all the building work going on because back in the 1960s, a big company decided to build a massive hotel here. And what the stupid architect didn't realise was that the entrance to his big grand new hotel came out right in front of one of these cabman oh. shelters. Because no one had told him that actually it, these are grade two listed buildings which have been Ooh. here since 1880. In the end, the cabman shelter fund agreed to just move the hut a few yards down the road in return for a contribution to their fund. This oh, one famously one. is yeah. the one where Benny Hill used to come in here because he used to live around the corner and also Winston Churchill. And normally you have to be a taxi driver in order to go into one but uh, 
I mean, who's turning away Winston Churchill? Unless I mean, you're so really famous. To get accepted. I don't believe he drove a cab, but he did used to come in here. So what I'm hearing is if we came over there, we'd totally be accepted in. Oh, right in. Yeah. Nope. We'd be hanging out. <laughs> we'd be kicked out so fast. We'd be serving the coffee and the tea. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he may We're have. not worthy of that. Perhaps some cab, please. And don't spare the horses. <laughs> Have you had somebody throw up in your cab? Yeah, sure. lots of times. You say, you're right, if you want to be ill, let me know and I'll stop the cab. No, no, I wouldn't do it to you, I wouldn't okay. do it to you. Uh, my mm. uncle's a cab driver, they've all got uncles that are cab drivers. Mm. And then they go quiet after a while and you hear, and then you go, quick, get the window down, get the window down. <laughs> and it's all down, going down the no. Mile End Road and there's all Couldn't cute clean. coat Couldn't clean it up. car behind me. <laughs> <laughs> if they right. do that, they don't get in my cab, and women are actually worse than men. You said that as well. <laughs> <laughs> well that's great. Well, no, and they cab. say, she'll be all right, she won't be sick. Oh yeah, I've heard that one before. <laughs> uh, mm. I've had a guy, defecate in the seat where you're sitting actually oh, <laughs> thanks for that. He, i think he had a problem he didn't know I, this young lad he, didn't he got know. in and i was I, wondering what that stain was i cleaned it and then it still stunk the, the <laughs> thing so it was getting busy and maybe i don't want to ride started hailing me and, and i said before you get in <laughs> can i tell you someone's just changed a baby in there it's up to you they go we're late for the theater no no we, we've waited long enough for you as it <laughs> is and they get in and they go oh god they're hilarious wow i'm sure not everyone's that kind. oh i'm sure there's plenty of cab stories yeah, but I'm sure when I was at Manchester that. University, my mm. friend Adele from Wigan, she uh, she was she was quite badly behaved in a cab. She said one one day she didn't she didn't want to pay for the cab, and and uh, instead when the when the guy said, oh, it's uh, that's ten pounds, please, uh, she just dropped her pants. And you see this bit here, she just uh, she just presented her front bottom into this bit here. She oh. just went like that. Okay. She said, you take this. Okay. So decided to take the money, and he just chucked her out. She was funny. Oh. If it was me, I'd have looked at her and gone, you got nothing smaller. <laughs> it's closed, like everywhere, but this used to belong to Piers Morgan. Seems like a really? reasonable place to finish a video about taxis. There is a danger of black cabs dying out in no. London. So remember to encourage their use. Use a black cab if you can. Yeah, where people are going to take a poo and, and vomit. Come on. English traditional <laughs> okay. Cheers, everybody. Cheers, Louisa. Cheers, Cheers Mark. So Cheers, Mark. Thanks for watching. That was very interesting. I, I, that was fun. It was like watching a TV show. Uh -huh. um, I, like I said, I never saw his videos before. And... Um, I'm glad we watched that. Thank you again to our patron, Paula mm -hmm. Bartram. Thank you so much for the suggestion. Um, thank you. And thank you, Jules, for doing such a great video. Yeah, and for the song. Yes. The music video in between was fabulous. I still want to ride one. I still, I mean, I'm more so now than ever, actually, hearing more about the history. Uh -oh. Gosh, all the stuff they have to know, though, the knowledge thing, mm -hmm. that's crazy. I'm sure there's a lot more information about that than, than um, what was even mentioned here. I wonder what the percentage is of people passing mm. and, and taking the test or, you know, how long on average does it take someone to study enough to pass it? Good question. That'd be interesting. Good question. Um, that was really fun, though, like driving around like different places and stuff and mm -hmm. like just hearing the banter between everybody. If you guys like this episode, please hit that like button and consider subscribing to the channel. Um, my big questions are, are there black taxis outside of London? Mm -hmm. um, what else? I forgot them. Oh no! I asked him during the video. I want to know. It's probably one of them. Is it a black cab company that owns it? Are they all, all owned by a company or are they independently owned and operated? I want the one guy did say something about working <coughs> for himself, didn't he? Yeah, and they were saying like picking their own hours, but do they own the cab and True. they just work like under an umbrella, like certain guidelines yeah. or how does that work if you know and if you don't? That's okay. Really enjoyed it. Hope you guys did too. Drop us a line. Let us know what you think. And we will see you back on the next episode of the Debbie and Natasha show. That may mean something <laughs> and it may not. So watch the next episode. Until then, please love, like, jazz. And be as strong as Tyson. Bye.